Welcome to a new video. My name is Prince Mason. Today we are going to be retouching this image of this beautiful model Angel. If you guys haven't seen the behind the scenes of this shoe, I want you guys to click the link in the description below or I'll put a card up here on the right so you guys can definitely go check out the behind the scenes and see how we shot this look without any strobes. This was just natural light outdoors. So if you want to see how we shot this, go watch the behind the scenes and also big shout out to everybody that was a part of it from the Lex Ash to being bought the makeup artist or our hairstylist and our behind the scenes guy who is my assistant but we're not going to mention his name so he doesn't feel too happy anyways let's get straight into this video now the first thing i'll do with this image is just add a little bit of contrast to it right because i really want the um, background to be blown out and if we turn on our exposure one in here we can see that this part of the background is not blown out so that was the idea that i had for it so now I'm just going to pull this till the background is blown out. It's fine. Some part of our outfit can also be blown out for this, but you know, it's cool. That's not what we are concentrating on. And I will drag my blacks in with my levels. Maybe that's just a little bit too much. So I'm just going to pull that back a little bit to somewhere about five. Yeah, that's fine. And maybe just increase my shadows uh, a tiny bit. And I think that looks good. Maybe this place is a little bit too blown out. So I'm just going to pull my whites down. Take my highlights up, pull my whites down. Hmm. Let's see, what's my exposure one insane? You know, I think I can. I think I can blot the background a bit more in Photoshop. I I could do it in Capture One, but it's just uh, a lot easier, you know, doing all that in Photoshop. So I would rather just maintain some of this. I think. Okay, great. So now we are done in Capture One. I'm not doing too much here. Let's see if. I can just um, make the image a little bit warmer and that is totally fine. So now I'm going to take this image, edit in Photoshop and we are going to go to Photoshop. So now guys, we have our image in Photoshop and the first thing I want to do is remove the blemishes. So I am just going to use my basic frequency separation. Um, for an image like this, let's see, I will probably set my radius to somewhere around 10 that should work okay great now i'm just going to pick my clone stamp tool zoom inside and just take out the few blemishes make sure i'm on current layer and i'm working on my high layer and i'll just take out some of those blemishes if you want the frequency separation actions i have them out for free so just click the link in the description below and you will see them you just get both the basic and advanced frequency separation actions for free okay great so now we're going to take out all these blemishes make sure you hold option or alternate on pc to sample and clean just sample and clean very easy to take out blemishes in photoshop this is the first thing i always do with all my retouching just going to take this out so i don't know what i'm going to do with this image exactly i don't know if i'm going to go high end or if i am just going to give it this really natural edited look i'm not sure yet but i'll figure it out as we go now what's the difference between uh high end edit and the natural edit with the high end you know you go all in with your dodge and burn your frequency separation make sure everything is as nice and smooth as possible like the the skin texture is really nice and really smooth um i wouldn't say smooth i'll say even because if i say smooth then it just takes away i don't know most of the texture i'll say the skin texture is really even the transition between highlights and shadows are pretty um smooth and even too um i think that's your high-end retouching and for your natural retouching you know you still leave a few of those tiny patches to make the image look as natural as possible so just depends on you um different strokes for different folks in it just going to take some of these out okay great get you a model that has great skin and get you a makeup artist that knows how to work that skin and you would not have any problems in post 
get you a model with bad skin get you a makeup artist that does not know how to work that skin and you are going to be spending a couple years editing one photo i mean we've all been there i mean sometimes we're still there with some clients you know they don't want to get the best models because they don't want to pay you know they don't want to get the best makeup artists because they don't want to pay and you as a photographer you are stuck there after the photo shoot trying to make them possible possible okay great so now we are done removing most of the blemishes we can see so let's see our before and our after i'm just going to zoom in and show you guys before after you know um later we're still going to work and probably even out the the skin a lot more but for now we are good okay so what's the next thing that i'm going to do it depends on you if you just want to um keep it natural keep it looking nice you can just jump into frequency separation and you're done but no we're going to take it even further we are going to do micro dodge and burn so right now i'm going to turn on my complete dodge and burn or i'm going to run my complete dodge and burn actions and with my invert check layer i'm just going to you know set this to an acceptable level and i can see all the transitions between highlights and shadows okay that's great and now i'm going to go to my micro dodge and burn pick me a soft brush set my flow to one percent and my mode should be on normal okay great make sure my foreground color is white all right now i'm going to turn on my invert check layer and work with that so start from this part of the face and just work with my micro dodge and burn I'm going to be dodging and burning at the same time and this is probably going to take a while so I'm just going to come back after I am done with my micro dodge and burn. So now we are done with our first micro dodge and burn if i have to then i'll work on my second micro dodge and burn layer but let me show you guys what we've done so this is uh, before this is where we started from and this is where we are at right now now the next thing i'm going to do is just uh made a mistake here let me just take this harder next thing i'm going to do is just move my micro dodge and burn up and i will merge my frequency separation layers together so that's command e just merge it together and that's because i want to run another frequency separation i don't want it to affect the or the one below to affect the one up or vice versa so i'm just going to name this bfs so basic frequency separation and now 
under my micro dodge and burn i'll just come up here create a new stamp visible layer so command option shift and e okay great and i will run uh mm, what is that advanced frequency separation my action so i'm going to use the same radius of 10 Oh, I just I just did the radius of 100 <laughs> let me run that again as far as we can separation use the radius of 10 and I'll click OK okay now I'm going to pick my mixer brush tool great and these are the values I use up, up here all the values here and make sure I am working on my low frequency separation copy and what I'm going to do is just even out the transitions between the highlights and the shadows. Now I am not pressing my brush down. I am just going over the image gently. you guys can see i am using a pretty big brush and um i am not zoomed in all the way that's that's one mistake people do when they are working with frequency separation they just zoom in all the way and it kind of like messes up their image so let's see our before and our after you guys can see i haven't done much but there is an effect it it's not just um, moving the colors all over the place it's not moving the skin tones all over the place it's just really really subtle and that's what you have to do with your frequency separation just make sure you're not moving things around and that's why I always do my micro dodge and burn first because that way I can sort out whatever um, issues I have in the transitions between the highlights and the shadows whatever sharp um transitions i have with my micro dodge and burn and then the big transitions i just use my frequency separation to fix that so let's see uh before and our after as you guys can see before and after yes i know i've reduced some of the highlights but that's fine we're going to make those highlights pop again with um uh global dodge and burn okay so i can see some issues here some of the blemishes here well, the textures here are kind of like all over the place so i'm just going to fix that with my clone stamp tool now these edits aren't just for youtube straight to instagram so that's why i'm trying to take my time while i'm working on this by the way you should follow me on instagram if if you if you haven't it's at prince mason go see all my work there that's like my gallery of beauty images okay so now we are just trying to even out the, the textures now don't forget for the most part people are not going to see your image this way but you know when you work on the textures like this oh that was a mistake they just look smoother when zoomed out Okay, great. We are making a lot of progress. So wherever you have textures that are not even, just make sure you even those textures out. And the entire image just looks better that way. Let's take this out. Take this out here. Okay, great. You can see some textures that are uneven around here we're going to take all that out i feel like for retouching you just have to open your eyes and see what um the average person won't see you know don't like that just... and you also have to take your time especially when it's headshots and um, beauty images things that have to do with makeup you know if you're trying to sell a particular look okay so i don't like this right here so i'm just going to smoothen that out too okay 
so guys let's see our uh, before and after from the beginning now so this is our uh, before from the beginning and this is our after you guys can see it's like really subtle changes but we are doing an amazing job right so it's like tiny things from um your first frequency separation where you're just removing the blemishes the pimples trying to even out the texture to the second um to your first micro dodge and burn where you are smoothing out the images to your advanced frequency separation where you're doing both but in a more subtle way right and now we are going to move to our global dodge and burn by the way if you want all my actions definitely check out my digital store you can get my retouching essentials that has 14 amazing actions and i use them all the time to retouch if you watch all my retouching videos you know that's what i use um for both youtube my client work everything so definitely check that out and um if you want more you can check out my skin tone lots too and also my outdoor lots have some amazing things in my digital store and more things coming to help you retouch better retouch faster um i can see a tiny issue here um right here i don't like how the textures are so as you guys can see i'm not zooming in to take that out because i can see it um just like this i would like to take it out this way right okay great now the next thing i'm going to do like i said is global dodge and burn so right now i'm going to pick my brush make sure my flow i'll increase my flow a little bit now to about three and um what i'm going to do is just dodge my highlights first right so typically i know light falls on this part of the face here the forehead and under the chin so that's where i'm going to dodge first so another thing i like doing is turn off all my layers that i've worked on before so i can see how the original image looks and i can use that to dodge my image okay great just pick some of the nice highlights here and make those pop around her nose. Okay, I feel like dodge and burn makes your image pop more than sharpening. Um, your image just tends to look um, a tad bit sharper when you dodge and burn. And that's because a lot of people do not see your images like this. You know, to see the textures and how sharp it is, they tend to see it like this. So put that at the back of your mind when you are um retouching um, i see a lot of people sharpening their images a lot i do not do that um but i have a nice sharpening action if if you want to really nice works great i use it sometimes but not all the time you know i use it when i have to it comes in handy every once in a while so right now i am burning my image just dodged it just going to burn it now Now, if you haven't seen the behind the scenes, like I said, definitely go check out that video. This was shot entirely with natural light. Okay, so now we're going to turn on this layer and you guys can see. Ooh, let's see our global dodge and burn before, after, before, after. You guys can see that pop. Looks great. Okay, great. Now, the next thing I want to do, I think for now, I'm not going to need this micro dodge and burn layer anymore. But I'm just going to leave it there. It might come in handy. Who knows? I might see something that I want to take out with that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is my levels, right? Let's just pick uh, this tool and I'm just going to add some contrast to this image. Add some nice contrast to this image and add some nice highlights to this image too. And it looks really good. That looks beautiful, right? Okay, great. Um, the next thing I want to do after that is use my rich tones. Looks great. Take the opacity down. Um, probably throw a lot on there. Let's see. Let's just use one of my lots. So now I have thrown on this lot. Looks really good. Um, what I'm going to do is just increase my rich tones just a, a tiny bit and i'll reduce the effect of the lot from 100 percent all the way down to somewhere around here 54 somewhere around here works okay um one thing i said i was going to do earlier on was you know make sure that the background is blown out so what i'm going to do right now is uh made a mistake there is just pick my levels tool then go to select and go to color range. And I'm just going to pick the whites in the image and pick 
pick this too. Just pick everything there. Just make sure I select all my whites and everything there. Click OK. And now I can just pull this in to make sure that it's really white at the back. I don't know if you guys can see it. That's the before. So just look somewhere around here. And this is the after. And it's affecting her outfit. So what I'm going to do is just take my flow all the way. Make sure I pick my foreground color as black. And I'm just going to paint it out of the outfit and her face. And anywhere that I do not want blown out. So just be careful about this so you do not get the, the background too again. Okay. Okay, good. That's the before and that is the after. Okay, so let's see where this image is coming from, right? So this is our before right here and this is our after. Our before and our after. Now, you can make it a lot more natural by just, you know, reducing the... The rich tones, you know, I'm just going to put both of them in a group, command G, and I'll probably just take that down just a little bit. I actually like how it looks, actually. I love how it looks. Uh, my levels, I feel like my blacks, pretty dark, so just going to take that down a bit. Okay, great. Now, this looks amazing. This looks good. Maybe we should use, uh, you know, eyes and T action. I have that for free too, so you can just go get that. The whitening action. Not because her eyes need whitening, but just because it might just make her eyes just a, a little bit brighter. Right? So, stands out. I'm just going to reduce the opacity of that just a little bit so it stands out. Okay, great. Um, let's save this. Um, I don't need all these layers, so I'm just going to put them in the group. Sorry, I'm just going to merge them together because I don't really need them anymore. Um, now, let's save this and let's see what it looks like in Capture One. We're going to check our before and our after in Capture One. So, guys, now that we are here, let's see our before right here on our left and let's see our after right here on our right. As you guys can see, the whole idea of retouching is making sure that it's subtle it's nice even when it's high end it just looks really good so this is our before this is our after it almost seems like we haven't done anything but at the same time it seems like we have done quite a lot and i hope you guys really enjoyed today's video if you did give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more content like this subscribe to this channel and you know just comment below let me know it helps the channel grow share my content too on everywhere youtube instagram everywhere follow me on instagram and yeah I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys absolutely love this. If you want to see more retouching videos, let me know in the comments below. See you guys in the next video. Or also, I'm thinking about doing this. No, not this one. Maybe this. We'll see. We'll see. Thank you so much for watching today's video. See you guys in the next one. Have an amazing day. Peace out, guys.